It's been nearly two and a half years since Ronald Green died during a violent arrest at the hands of Louisiana State Police, and still more allegations of excessive force keep surfacing. But for one trooper who tried to reveal the cases long before they were exposed, discipline has moved much more swiftly. Investigative reporter Mike Pearlstein sat down with seven-year trooper who's voicing his concerns publicly despite the risk of losing his job. State Police Trooper Carl Cavalier said he first heard about the Ronald Green case when he was on assignment at the COVID Field Hospital at the New Orleans Convention Center in early 2020. And an investigator who had um, knowledge of the case and who also viewed the video early on before anyone else and was speaking about how gruesome the video was. Cavalier was a narcotics officer in Baton Rouge at the time, but he said he couldn't get the case out of his head, so he began asking questions. What he heard only made him more alarmed. I guess it created like a shock to me, it created like a, a level of disappointment that I'm still recovering from now. Um, the fact that these guys are actively covering up a murder. While reports about the 2019 death of Ronald Green circulated inside the ranks of state police, the public was kept in the dark until this video was obtained by the Associated Press in May of this year. The video shows officers from Troop F in Monroe stunning, beating, and dragging Green on the ground until he turned limp and died, still handcuffed and shackled. For this Bridge City native and graduate of John Arad High School, he saw a victim who looked like him. You know, it can happen to anyone. And my family member, your family member, I just want the right thing to be done. Exposed while the country was still reeling from the images of George Floyd being murdered under the knee of Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin, the video made national news overnight. But the initial state police response was to blast the leak as unauthorized amid ongoing federal and state investigations. Cavalier saw something very different. Our killers and there are people who are okay with the killers being on the job, and that's the people who are um, a part of the cover-up. Days after the story broke, the state police reversed their position and released additional video. But to Cavalier, that only raised more questions about why it took 474 days before the agency began an investigation. Yeah, so I consider it a murder because why else would we, would we uh, hesitate to be transparent about it? You know, why else would we not do our jobs and hold these guys accountable? Why, why else? What other reason? Since then, internal and federal scrutiny has expanded to include other allegations of excessive force, both in Troop F and elsewhere in the state. Some of the troopers involved in Green's death have been fired and criminally charged in other cases. In one of those cases, the Associated Press published video Wednesday of a man... Aaron Bowman being beaten repeatedly with a flashlight after a traffic stop near his home in Monroe. Former state trooper Jacob Brown was previously booked with battery and malfeasance in that case. I was watching it, I broke down all over again. You know, it's just, you know I, I wouldn't want nobody to go through that. Cavalier said he was aware of the Bowman video and many others that haven't been released. You know, there, there are still videos that still remain um, under lock and key. Despite knowledge of the Bowman video within the state police and his injuries ranging from a broken jaw, ribs, wrist, and a head gash that required staples, it took more than a year and a half for internal affairs to investigate, according to the AP. To Cavalier, that raises serious questions about those higher in the chain of command who have yet to face any repercussions. In the Green case, as exposed previously by WWL-TV, the highest ranking officer who responded to that chase, 31-year veteran Lieutenant John Clary, has faced no discipline, despite numerous accounts that he lied about having body camera footage. This isn't right. You, you guys shouldn't be awarded and patted on the back for, for your silence. Cavalier decided not to remain silent. Going against department policy, the trooper did an interview with WBRZ in Baton Rouge in June. For that, he got a warning letter. Then in July, he appeared on the New Orleans radio station WBOK. Is there something in the atmosphere of the state police department that needs to be corrected? Yes, there, there's a, a toxic brotherhood, bleeding blue. I'm on uh, paid administrative leave. Um, this leave began August 2nd. This disciplinary letter outlines the investigation of Cavalier for potential violations of loyalty, making public statements, and not following orders. You're on this paid administrative leave for speaking out, and here you are speaking out 
to WWL TV. Where do you think this ends up for you? I don't know for sure. I don't, I don't know for sure what's going to happen with me, but I can assume that I think they'll find a way to terminate me. While Cavalier refuses to stay silent, he has been joined by others demanding action. So we are, are pleased to learn of individuals who are willing uh, to put themselves out to make sure that the truth uh, comes out, that there is accountability and transparency, but there still must be that systemic uh, review. Judy Reese Morse, president of the Urban League of Louisiana, said her organization not only wants to see a resolution in the Ronald Green case, but the culture that allowed his case and others to happen. But the entire department should be looked at very carefully from top to bottom and from side to side. The Metropolitan Crime Commission also has been following the case closely. I think it's a safe assumption to say that other troopers feel the same way as Trooper Cavalier feels, but rather than go on the radio, they may be cooperating with law enforcement. Cavalier says he remains loyal to the state police, but another loyalty ranks even higher. You know, what was the motivation to drive you to uncover the facts about that? Well, just being a, a decent human being, just being a decent human being, um, um, that, that, that drives me, that was driving me at the time, that's driving me now. Mike Perlstein, Eyewitness News. So the state police offered a lengthy statement about all of the ongoing investigations, and it is this quote as the investigation into the death of Ronald Green remains under review by federal and state authorities. LSP continues to offer our full cooperation, although the ongoing investigation prevents the release of further information. LSP fully intends to release all available documents and investigative files at the appropriate time. As the department awaits the findings of the federal investigation, the men and women of the Department of Public Safety remain dedicated to professional public service across our state.